All right, everyone, what's happening? Welcome back, it's Adam, and in today's video, I'm reviewing the AirPods 3. Now, at first, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even care to review these. I really have never cared for AirPods, even though the iPhone, I'm a huge iPhone addict, and if you've been watching this channel, I love Apple products, period. But when it comes to AirPods, compared to the competition of what's out there with true wireless earbuds, given that I come from the first pair of true wireless earbuds I ever bought, were the Jabra Elite 65Ts. And those are awesome, especially at the time, but how far earbuds have come, I was like, nah, these ain't gonna do it. But, but after using them for two weeks now, I gotta say, these, these are a banger. And <laughs> for a couple of reasons, but obviously they have some flaws, but the best way I can put it is what I put in the title, is that they are super convenient. But I say they're super convenient, namely because of the design of these. With AirPods 3, they for sure are the best design they come out with. Now, I know it's gonna be hit or miss when it comes to the fit for most people, but for me personally, I didn't think the fit was gonna be good, but even just the profile of these, how they do not stick out with the silicone ear tips the way AirPods Pros did. I said that kind of weird, but <laughs> with the AirPods Pro, I noticed that when most people put them in, they're not really a snug fit. They always have like this little curved popping out look, and I didn't like that at all even though they had A and C and everything, that was pretty annoying. They weren't the best fit for my ears. But the funny thing is with the AirPods 3, luckily for me, they're a perfect fit. I mean, I'll just give you real world usage instead of trying to explain like, oh, this is why they designed it and this and that. I was on my computer last night editing some videos. And when I was on my computer, I left these in because I was listening to an audiobook. And on my computer, I didn't have headphones on, right? And as I'm editing the videos, I was like, I kind of just noticed like something was in my ears and I was like, holy cow, I left my AirPods in. That's how comfortable the fit is for me, which is shocking to say given that they're made of plastic and don't have a silicone ear tip. And that may have been a long-winded explanation of why I like the design already, but even with the mesh cutouts for the Adaptive EQ that these use to kind of create more of a natural ambient sound without using microphones or anything like that, given they don't have active noise canceling, I think that's what helps, is relieving the pressure from them feeling like you have something squeezing in your ear for that isolation. So with all that being said, I'm already gonna say right off the bat, if you're looking for a pair of earbuds under $200, and for sure, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, it's a no brainer to just get these, even if you don't care about active noise canceling. You need something that just works and works every time you bust them out to use them for music or content consumption. There's other things as well, like controls with the force touch sensors, and those are pretty convenient because it makes it sound, they have the little clicking haptic feedback noise they make to where it sounds like you're actually pushing a button. And it's just pretty nifty to let you know that that's being accessed. Otherwise, I can kind of care less about that, but it definitely helps. You know, playing, pausing music, pressing once, skipping twice, holding for Siri, things like that, skipping tracks and whatnot. But it's nothing drastically innovative. You know, it's just they're convenient to use because it just works pretty accurately and seamlessly every single time. Now, they are sweat and water resistant now, so I have worked out on these. And did I notice any issues with working out with them? You know, did they stay in my ears pretty well? Well, I'll just kind of do my shake test now. I should have done that before, but let's just see how well they stay in. All right, so I'm shaking my head pretty hard right there, and they're staying in pretty well. So. It's good to know that I barely had to adjust them at all for workouts. And I mean, I don't really do anything crazy. You know, I don't do gymnastics. Obviously, I'm not that in good shape, you know, <laughs> but I do basic calisthenic workouts, you know, kettlebell workouts where I'm swinging a lot of things and weighted jump rope and whatnot. And I did go for a bike ride at these recently. Didn't have any trouble adjusting them or didn't even have to frequently adjust them. They just stayed in my ears. Now that even goes for the case with these. The case is even IPX4 sweat and water resistant. Now with the case, are they pocketable? Yes, you can definitely put them in the change pocket or the iPod nano pocket maybe, if you've seen that with Steve Jobs. But whatever that pocket is for, yes, you can fit these in there pretty easily, no problem. So pocketable, yes. And when it comes to the back, wireless charging with MagSafe, and I don't really use MagSafe, but I can see that being a major convenience for everybody. But since I don't use MagSafe because I haven't cared 
to buy a MagSafe charger, not even because I have a tech channel. I buy stuff that I'm actually gonna use first in mind before worrying about it being for my tech channel. I would have loved if you can place these on the back of an iPhone and charge them that way, but iPhones don't have that. That would have been way better utility and function for those that don't wanna buy an extra accessory than even lightning or having USB-C instead of lightning. A lot of people complain about lightning. For the average consumer, it doesn't matter. They're going to charge it probably overnight anyway. So I think it just would have been better for everyday consumers if you can charge it with your MagSafe compatible phone already. Now, before going any further, I definitely got to touch base on the sound because this probably is going to be the most important thing that makes or breaks somebody's purchasing decision of these if they don't like the design or fit and whatnot. And when it comes to sound, the easiest way I can put it is in a long time, besides the AirPods Max, these are one of the most comfortable sounding earbuds for long-term use for duration of how comfortable it was to listen to podcasts, audiobooks, music, and watching movies, and even gaming with them overall. I mean, that's how good they are. There's nothing that stands out, but everything is tuned to where I had no complaints with any genre, except the treble being just a little up there, you know, with snares and cymbals and things like that. I noticed those pierced a little harder than I wanted and then the sound, and that's probably coming from the Sennheiser CX Plus, which are the last earbuds I use for two weeks straight every single day before using these consistently for two weeks straight. So if that doesn't make sense, best way I can put it is take the WF-1000 XM4s. Those are great true wireless earbuds, but no matter how much I adjust the EQ and whatnot, they're just way too heavy on the lows. I mean, that's the pronounced sound signature of those. And I'm like, well, I don't need to always fill everything. Like I don't need a popping sound with podcasts or somebody's voice to be so deep. You know, I just wanna listen to it in its full clarity. These really bring that. And another example I can give is Bose and Sennheiser. Those are more on the clarity and detail of music more than you filling it with bass. And you can kind of see with my body language what I mean. And with these, it's right in the middle of those two examples I just gave. And to give some examples of albums I've been listening to the past two weeks while using these are Tool's Anima album, Big Sean's newest album with, or it's his EP with Hip Boy, the What You Expect, and then Drake's If You're Reading This, It's Too Late. All those really shined with these earbuds. So for me, with the AirPods 3, I think they did really good on the sound. Nothing's outlandish or too out of the ordinary. It's just Apple being Apple and trying to create their own sound signature. And I think they did really well. So. Very pleased with the music and content consumption of these. Now with spatial audio, what do I think about that? I really don't care for it, but I can't explain the difference between head tracking and also the fixed sound. Fixed sound is really like surround sound in your ears, whether you're looking at your phone or tilting your head or whatever. It just kind of echoes and amplifies it to try to sound like you're in a theater, whether you're listening to music or if you're watching a movie or playing video games on your phone and things like that. But with fix or with the head tracking, it basically goes just like what it sounds. It makes it seem like your phone phone's right in front of you and you're tilting your head. It's going to sound, you're going to feel that music or hear that music shift to whatever direction you're looking with your earbuds. So I think it's pretty cool. It's not the biggest thing, but it's more so if you just want to feel weird about your music. I really have no idea how to explain it. I just never really cared for it. I think what matters most is the fixed spatial audio because that really sounds like kind of like an echo chamber without having a lot of reverb of you just seeming like you're in a movie theater kind of thing. But overall, I just didn't really care for it too much. So hopefully everything I've been explaining has been helpful enough, but now let's move into our microphone test of these. Now with the microphones, I've never been impressed with the AirPods, even the AirPods Pro in the past, but I think they did a much better job with these, but I'll let the example speak for itself. So first it's gonna be a quiet office test and then it'll be inside a real coffee shop test and then I'll kind of clarify my experience with it. So let's move into that. All right, microphone test one, two, three in my quiet office, test one, two, three. And I'm gonna even whisper a little bit, test one, two, three, test one, two, three. I'm gonna speak a little bit louder. I never usually do that, so I'm kind of curious how that sounded. All right, and just to do it, it's a really windy day today. I'm walking outside right now uh, near the downtown area where I live. So there's cars driving by right now, and man, it's really windy. The wind picked up right now and it's cold. All 
All right, microphone test one, two, three, and a real coffee shop. The decibels were about 85 to 90 at some points. Right now, it's about 75 to 80 decibels. So it's definitely pretty loud. Microphone test one, two, three. So with that microphone test, I will say, if you care about call quality experience, it's good enough. But if we're talking, you need something professional, $200 and below with the earbuds, the Jabra Elite 7 Pros do way better than these. I mean, it's not even close. You even get side tone to hear yourself on phone calls with those. Those have been the best call quality experience, not just for me, but for the other person on the other line that I've used in the $200 and below earbud price range. Now, what do I think overall with the AirPods 3 and just AirPods in general? I mean, for me, first, they're a fashion statement, but second, they're convenient. <laughs> And I mean, I'm going to be one of the only tech channels to admit that AirPods are straight a fashion statement. And the best way I can put it is for $179, you can get the Sennheiser CX Plus earbuds, which have way better sound quality, a way better app for controls and functionality, even volume controls with those, which these don't have. And coming from those to these, even though those are chunkier earbuds, overall usage of them and even the call quality for me and the other person are just way better. I mean, it's comparable with the mic quality, but those for the same price with having active noise canceling and one of the best I heard in the price range, I'd rather go with something like that if I'm going to bet my money on a product. And that's kind of why I say these are more a fashion statement and brand statement first. I mean, you put them in and ooh, he has the new AirPods without the silicone tip. That's, that's all like the everyday consumer is gonna see it. I mean, but they are worth it if you just want a pair of earbuds that work. I mean, look how they're just snug, they're in there, boom, you got basic controls, you know, you have the entire Apple ecosystem at your fingertips or even hands-free when using what's your name, I don't wanna say it, but that's what makes them so convenient, especially since in a 2019 study, they basically would be the 32nd largest company in the world, estimated at $190 billion if they were a company in and of itself, that's pretty freaking nuts. But it's just because of ease of use and convenience and brand recognition of, hey, I got the new AirPods. But overall, they're good. I just would rather spend money on other products. And till this day, especially since the Elite 7 Pros from Jabra came out, I'd rather spend the extra 20 bucks for those, even skipping the AirPods Pro, even though I've been seeing those on sale from anywhere from just 199, so 50 bucks off, to 189 if you get them on Amazon and whatnot. So overall, these are good if you just want something that works and is universally adaptable to your liking, but there's still better options in my opinion out there for sure. But anyhow, hope this review helped. Thanks for watching. I can elaborate more and more, but I just wanna end it there before I talk too much. So I hope all is well, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see y'all on the next one.